Hello and welcome to Eyewitness with me, John Rees. For just over a week now, demonstrators in Spain have occupied city squares across the nation. In scenes reminiscent of Cairo's Tahir Square, thousands have filled the streets of Madrid to protest against the government's programme of harsh cuts to public spending and rising unemployment, which at over 20% is the highest in the European Union. However, these demonstrations are much more than an expression of economic discontent and point to a deeper problem of a political system which people see as corrupt and lacking in legitimacy. Today we look at what many are now calling the Spanish Revolution and ask whether this is the clearest sign yet that the Arab Spring is blossoming into a global protest movement. Amidst the biggest economic crisis in decades, Spanish citizens have taken to the streets to protest against rising unemployment corruption and a broken political system. Spain's economy is in a desperate state of decline and unemployment is the highest in Western Europe at over 20%, with 45% of 18 to 25 year olds out of work. Prime Minister Zapatero has ushered in a desperate series of cuts and austerity measures as the country battles to rein in its budget deficit and avoid the fate of other Eurozone countries, such as Portugal, Greece and Ireland, that have all needed bailouts. Yet while people are suffering as a result of these cuts, it is becoming increasingly apparent that this movement is much more than an economic protest. I don't see really it as an economic protest. It's uh, far deeper than that. If you look at the slogans, uh, they are far reaching. They, they, at least the, the hardcore group organizing the protest, they want to change the way in which politics are, are done in Spain. So in that respect, I, I think it's more of a political protest, akin to that of the Arab world, rather than what we're seeing, for example, in Greece, where it is clearly the dissatisfaction at the government measures. Here, the government has passed uh, austerity measures, but that was a year ago, so it's not clearly that it is that, that is the main reason. Demonstrations were originally organized in 50 cities by youth group Democracia Real Ya. But the massive group that formed in Madrid's main square, Puerta del Sol, on May the 16th, exceeded everyone's expectations. Locations, dates and details about the protests spread through social media, flooding users with pictures, videos and text updates from demonstrators in Madrid and the rest of the country. Mainstream media has had a hard time keeping up with the news and events, while citizen-led media has continued to propagate their message. The demonstrations coincided with local elections this weekend, which saw the ruling Socialist Party suffer heavy losses to the gain of the right-wing Popular Party. However, the election results reflect a wider dissatisfaction at incidents of corruption and a political system dominated by two stagnant parties. Many who filled Madrid's Puerta del Sol on the weekend chose to vote for smaller parties in protest. While Spain's socialist government is a far cry from the repressive regimes of the Middle East and North Africa, many of the challenges faced are the same. Parallels with Cairo's Tahrir Square are easily made, with many of the protesters drawing on the symbolism and rhetoric of the Arab Spring. By occupying public spaces, both in the street and online, Spanish citizens are taking inspiration from a global movement and reacting to a political system which has long rejected their needs and demands. Well, joining me in the studio today are Dr. Nagore Calvo, lecturer in Spanish and European Studies at King's College London, and journalist Laura Alvarez. Welcome to you both. Um, Laura, um, is, is the, has the clip got it right? Is this a, a combination of economic and political demands fused with the inspiration of the Arab Revolt? It's certainly a combination of both, both factors. The economical factor, it has been, it had been decisive and essential really essential with the, the creation of these um, social movement and also the outraged feel by felt by people because the political system the political parties and the politicians themselves don't represent people anymore and that's the feeling that people have nowadays mm. dr coward is, is is that your take is that there's a fusion of these mm. uh, of these different strands coming together well um it could be the case, and, and yes, I would agree with Laura. 
uh, to a point, but I would say, I mean, from what I've been um, reading and following the news, that the underlying, for me at least, the, the underlying pr uh, kind of problems are rather the unemployment and the uncertainty, and also uh, what they perceive uh, is a, a future without prospects. I, I, I would say that this is the underlying problems, and obviously, uh, these have uh, these have found expression in different ways, and some of the ways uh, are, for example, you know, um, um, protesting against political corruption and so on and so forth. But I would maybe put the emphasis first on mm. these other issues. And what about the element of the, the influence of the, uh, of the Arab Spring? Obviously nothing like this happens without you know, uh, forceful domestic causes, but, uh, but the, the coincidence in time and, and the form sure, of the movement? Sure, kind of, certainly, and kind of probably, I mean, uh, given kind of uh, a, or a result of technology and internet and you know, the media and so on and so forth, certainly kind of these, uh, uh, these movements have uh, probably learned or have kind of, uh, kind of uh, important some of the ways of organizing protests and incorporating to their own demands. But as I said before, I think the underlying principles, I would say, in my opinion, are kind of uh, the unemployment and... Uh, it is precisely, from my point of view, actually, and I do agree with her as well, it is precisely the encouragement probably that they saw in Tahrir mm -hmm. Square along a while ago, what to me has caused a, such a social movement that is certainly causing as well the, the awakening of the civil society, I would say, because this has nothing to do with political parties. They are not, they are not um, political parties involved, not even trade unions. It's all about the people. It's all about the people of the country complaining and, and feeling that they've got enough, that they've mm -hmm. got enough mm -hmm. with not only by paying the political crisis, which is something that obviously they feel it has to be paid by the owners, by the ones at least that cause these economical crises, but also um, complaining about the whole political system, which again, it's it's been working not only not with them or for them, but also against them yeah. for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's an element, it seems to me, of a, of a of a generational revolt. I mean, it seemed to me this in, in the Arab Spring as well. This is a, um, it's not exclusively a, a, a young people's movement. The demands aren't specifically about young people, but a lot of the drivers of it seem to be uh, seem to be young people. Do you think? I do, I do believe that young people are the one at this side or at least this sector of society which could feel more encouraged and more, with more, more passionate mm -hmm. maybe uh, to put this, this discourse forward. It has to do with the political disaffection as well, I guess. All people, people that have been voting for over 20 years and people that have seen that, have seen that none, of they, none of their votes okay. have gone anywhere. Mm. These people are probably not leading this social movement because they probably don't feel like, and I think it's perfectly understandable. And young people, I guess that they still have faith, and that is perfectly legitimate because we don't we not we, we don't have to resign to have you know mm. a real democracy now. But at the same time, it has to do with political disaffection, political mm. disaffection that has also have such a great influence uh, fighting against corruption. But at the same time, and I think that this should be pointed out. Um, for instance, in Valencia, which is one of the regions, uh, Francisco Camps, uh, the president, uh, was um, was brought to court because he was, um, well, he was he was he was he had such an involvement within a corruption scandal. Let's put it like mm. that. Let's not get into technical terms, but he just got elected again. Mm. So at the same time, it's complex. Mm -hmm. It's such a complex mm -hmm. political analysis mm. that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree that this movement uh, is primarily, uh, or is being primarily driven by young people, and actually, uh, democracia, uh, uh, democracia real kind of movement started uh, in Twitter. university. So, um, you know, kind of, there is a very kind of, uh, kind of a youth component kind of driving kind of this, uh, uh, this movement, and clearly, I think it reflects what Laura is saying, maybe the dissatisfaction with the political uh, classes and the fact that they are unable to give an answer to the economic crisis at the moment. But I think you can see, and it's very interesting, kind of the witnesses or the witness ac uh, accounts from um, kind of uh, middle age or kind of older kind of people as well joining the demonstration. And, uh, and it's been interesting how uh, 
uh, kind of they are comparing it kind of to the transition of the Spain and kind of reclaiming again the need to reclaim again kind of democracy mm. and real democracy. And even compared with my May 1968 in Paris, because it's such a huge mm -hmm. social movement that has never happened mm -hmm. in Spain. Mm -hmm. mm. And do you think partly this is a result of the the, 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 the younger generation get this message quicker because they're more relating to the social media? I mean, it's not a primary cause, but do you think it's a perhaps a secondary element in that? This has been criticised, mm -hmm. actually. It's been criticised the fact that it has been so busy to, you know, organise and gather people. It's been criticised as an argument to dismantle and destroy a little bit the legitimacy of such a movement. Mm. I particularly disagree. I think it's such an important and crucial movement. But at the same time, uh, it's, it's definitely true. It's been way easier to mm -hmm. gather people through Facebook and Twitter yeah. and, and mm -hmm. you know, the social networks. Okay, well, I'm just going to have to stop you there because uh, we want to hear what um, people in Spain have been saying online. MC Lightning posted this compilation of Skype interviews uh, earlier this week. First of all, I, w I would like to, to thank the interest uh, for uh, for our protests, uh, and uh, I, I, I wanted just to, to, to say that in the beginning. Uh, the, the protest started uh, last uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, it was uh, it was a big protest, like uh, something like uh, from five, uh, fifty thousand to one hundred thousand people. Uh, um, uh, went uh, on a parade from uh, Plaza de, Cile de Cibeles to Plaza del Sol. It had uh, almost no uh, no uh, cover from uh, from main newspapers or or TV stations or whatever. It, uh, they uh, they talked about what happened, but they uh, they centered the information on the the, the problems uh, with the police afterwards. Uh, yes, there have been some uh, attempts of, of of confusing the people, or what, uh, maybe because they don't exactly know what is going to, uh, what is going about. But uh, from I've been following in Twitter, I I, I have been more following. Uh, on live uh, broadcasts of, of, of what was going on in Puerto del Sol yesterday night. Um, I believe this is, there is not political party behind those movements. No one. We, we would like a change. This movement is not related to politics. I mean, there's no sign of politics. We cannot go to the protest with any flag or anything about it's, it's just saying that we are fed up. No, we are not moved by any union, or we are not moved by any association, or we are not moved by. We are moved only by an idea, and ideas just can't be uh, be moved by by uh, by associations or whatever. They can They have to be moved by by the people. The other the other thing is that the um, how we are paid, the the salaries are, are low. Mm -hmm. I mean, 1,000 euros is a normal salary. That's what we call mil euristas. Mil means thousand. Mil mm -hmm. euristas, it's like uh, people who earn 1,000 euros. With earning 1,000 euros, you cannot buy a house. Uh, social networks really, really gave us uh, this guy-to-guy uh, -guy thing. Like, I'm talking to you right now, and you're in Montreal. I mean... That's the real power to, to, to have really a freedom for me to speak with another person and tell that person what I think and that person tell me what they think and that that's why it had so much power because it, it is really a people to people movement. The way of communicating between people is changing worldwide. Young people don't read paper news in the paper. Don't watch uh, TV. Yeah. We are fighting for freedom, as Egyptians did, our Palestinians did, or our, uh, uh, people in Italy, and people in France, and people in Germany, and all these movements around the world. We are fighting for the same thing. We know our situation is, is way different than, than other situations, but the same thing is, is, is common, the freedom and, and the love. 
So, uh, Dr. Cabell, there's an interesting uh, point emerging here, which is that, um, you know, from a sort of establishment political point of view, um, it would be objected to the comparisons with Tunisia and, uh, and Egypt. Look, those were dictatorships and people were fighting with democracy. This is a parliamentary democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet the, the language is eerily similar and there seems to be a distance between the entire ruling elite, even in the democratic countries, and the mass of people on, on the streets. Do you think that's an interesting development? Yeah, I kind of, I, th I think, kind of, it, yeah, it, it, it is the case, kind of, there seems to be kind of a perceived distance uh, from the protesters and the political elite um, uh, at the moment. And certainly it seems that at the moment there isn't um, a political um, uh, a political leadership that can uh, carry out the necessary changes in Spain, or at least the protesters uh, kind of don't seem to be able to to find that political leadership, uh, kind of neither in the political nor in the economic uh, kind of realms. So what it is going to be interesting is because they were they, they also are talking about the idea, kind of and kind of aching to kind of the, the, the ideal of a revolution and so on and so forth. But how it's going to be able to materialize, or who is going to be able uh, to take it forward into kind of eventually a political program or kind of mm. you know. Because, uh, Laura, that's one of the interesting things, that it, it's, it's a crisis between the mass of protesters and the political elite, but it also seems to be a crisis of the established left organisations and indeed even the, even the unions, and it seems to be taking place even outside that sphere. Would you say that's the case? Definitely it's the case, and what is even more worrying than a crisis of the left to me, it's the fact that the right-wing People's Party has gained ground mm -hmm. massively. Uh, mm. Yesterday, as you mm. may know, um, we've, got, we've got regional election, elections, mm. and the result, the result was that People's, mm -hmm. People's Party yeah. gained uh, again in both the City Council of Madrid and also the um, uh, Autonomic Community, which is the region of Madrid. Also in Valencia, as I said, the ex-president um, uh, was re-elected, even though he was involved in a corruption scandal. Mm -hmm. Also in Catalonia. Um, in northeast, uh, with the with the nationalist side, even though People's Party uh, not even re-elected, but also gained uh, way a lot of support. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly a crisis of the left because people that usually mm -hmm. voted left didn't go to vote yesterday, mm -hmm. and that was not only um, for the sake of the right, but also uh, at the expense, I would say, of society in general, because mm -hmm. uh, this economic crisis um, is not going to be solved by capitalist solutions, I would say. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you think that, that what's happening in the electoral sphere is kind of, um, it's kind of uh, fractured from what people are actually feeling because I mean you're given two choices in the election you don't like the government's there mm. that's there you vote for its mm. opposition but fundamentally the policies remain the same yeah. isn't isn't that what's producing this fracture between the entire political class and and the demonstrators well I, 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 I would definitely uh, agree on that I mean uh, there has been a political um, an economic policy continuation uh, since the early 1980s uh, from kind of uh, that uh, encompasses the political parties of the PSOE, the center-left political party and the center-right political party. And it has been a series of policies in privatization and austerity and uh, deficit control and so on and so forth. And this hasn't changed in the last 20 years or so. So uh, yes, I mean, kind of, I think you know, what these demonstra uh, demonstrators are showing is this dissatisfaction kind of and, and the realization that, you know, the political kind of class is not changing and is not changing the solutions that they are coming up with in order to tackle kind of at the moment the current economic crisis and so that I will also I will also that the fact of we're definitely witnessing at least to me a, a paradigm shift a crisis of democracy and this is not exclusive of, no, of Spain no, but think, certainly yeah. as the video said as we could as we could saw on the video Spain has the highest rate of unemployment mm. and probably it's not, I'm suggesting that, of course, it's not only based on the economy, it's also based on the way politicians do their task and everything. But by the end of it, mm. when you have a, you know, you know uh, when you go to university, when you've been working so hard for such a long time, you're losing your job, you see your neighbours moving up because they cannot pay, mm -hmm. uh, pay their rents or their mortgages. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's the it's the whole population and the whole country mm -hmm. uh, manifested and represented through through those high rates of unemployment that are definitely suffering the mm -hmm. crisis, the political crisis, uh, the crisis of democracy, mm -hmm. any kind of crisis, and that's and that's what it, it has been it has been shown on these demonstrations. Mm -hmm. But I think we shouldn't forget either, kind of going back to the elections, that actually the, the turnout uh, uh, in, in the elections yesterday is actually increased to 66 percent mm. from the 63 percent turnout in 2003. Mm. So it's as well very significant uh, that, you know, kind of um, the majority uh, of the Spanish citizens chose to actually go to vote and actually chose to vote for the center right political party. So mm. kind of it, it let us kind of wondering who are these protesters and who they represent and how actually, you know, what would be the best way in the future to be able to articulate these demands and actually convince the rest of the Spanish citizens that th we should aspire to look for alternative ways of uh, looking and doing things. It's quite interesting, uh, you know, uh, somebody in one of the clips made a comparison with Greece mm -hmm. and, but the major revolt in Greece that we're familiar with happened before the Arab Spring mm -hmm. and this has happened afterwards and it's mm -hmm. interesting that the, the, the immediately, whether or not it's, it's accurate, mm -hmm. the term Spanish Revolution has been adopted, the form of the, of the, of the protests mirrors to here square it seems that that has lifted it into a, in a, to, into a different at least rhetorically into a different challenge to the system mm -hmm. through civil society mm. I'm, I'm definitely convinced that mm. this is uh, the awakening of civil society mm -hmm. in Spain mm -hmm. uh, a civil society that also I would say also uh, specifically in Catalonia has been has been uh, asleep for a long time mm -hmm. and now due to different causes and different reasons the whole country's is waking up, mm -hmm. and it's such a it's such an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. I think, it, as you said, it's it's not an exclusive thing of Spain, even though obviously the reasons are, are different. But the shape of the revolution, the construct, and the apparatus of the revolution looks pretty much the same. And it's nothing more, it's nothing else than people gathering and collecting themselves and just claiming and having uh, one unique demand. And this is this is just amazing, and it's incredible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for democracy. I'm gonna have to stop you there, but um, the. <laughs> Twitter sphere has again been alight with news of this revolution with hashtags such as democracy realia and yes we camp attracting huge amounts of traffic. Let's see what people have been saying. I don't think international press gives the importance that the Spanish revolution deserves. It's huge, different, amazing. People being urged to join Spanish revolution on YouTube video gone viral attracting 300,000 views in three days supporting Spain's protests. This is greater than Paris 68. Go Spain, go! Papa, mama, levantaros del sofa. Remember that democracia real ya is not only about Spain, it is about a system that thinks you impede your own happiness. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Uh, my thanks to Laura and to Dr. Calvo. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.